Yeah. Like a starter for a show like I do for everybody else, but don't do for myself. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're going to work on that. <laughs> so, hey guys, this is Jamie and this is We Have to Change Together. And on today's episode, I have Candace White. Hi. Oh, okay. She said hi. Hey. Oh, what? So no, you're fine. What camera do I look into? That one. That this was yours. One. Okay. That one's mine. And that one's the one we share together. Okay. Because we have to change together. Right. So anyways, <laughs> so I've known Candace for about six years now. Yeah. Something like that. Starting off taking your pictures. Mm -hmm. And um, you've started your own company. Yes. Okay. What is the name of your company? My company is This Is Bliss. Um, and I sell all natural fruit juices, veggie juices, um, herbal teas, and herbal supplements. And everything I hand make myself. So I, I make it with love. It's now, the good stuff. What is a veggie juice? Because, you know, I'm a firm believer and the cow eats the grass. I eat the cow. So that's how I get my vegetables. <laughs> of so course. go ahead and break it down to me. Okay. So, for instance, um, one of my juices is spinach, pineapple, and ginger. So with spinach, you literally you put it in a juicer and you will get juice from the spinach. Oh, am I supposed to be? Yeah, turn, turn your belly button towards your Come camera a little bit. Way. There yeah, we go. They want to see your face, not your side of your face. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Yeah, um, you can you can juice any veggie, literally. Like I've I've juiced carrots. Um, that's pretty much it. Spinach and carrots. I haven't really ventured out into other veggies just yet. Okay. But yeah. So is it or is it not true that you have a um, you're going to do your first festival this weekend? Yes, and I'm so excited. So I'm going to be at the Carolina Beach um, Farmers Market. Um, I'll have juices on hand, um, herbal teas, and herbal supplements. Herbal supplements are pretty much vitamins. I pretty much take um, the grounded herb and I put it into a capsule for you. Awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. So also, am I correct? You need a banner by Saturday for your table? Yeah, really, I need it by Friday because um, I'm going to be at the festival. I have to be there by 7 a.m. to get prepped and everything. Mm -hmm. So I need it by Friday. But, yes, um, I need a banner. And I already have the design and the logo and everything. I just need it big for my table. So do we have any design companies on the uh, live right now? And if so, can we help Candace out? Cause yeah. she, so she needs this done ASAP. Uh, we would love a great price if at all possible. Right. And because you know how the hustle goes when you first start. Right. And uh, let's see what we can do. Yeah. I love you all forever. Help me out. Help me out, please. <laughs> all right. So let's talk about the change in this world. So yeah. we've had a lot of changes recently. We've mm -hmm. had the protests and we've had everything else. Mm -hmm. Now, we've done videos for you before. Okay. Okay. And you've talked about mental health. Yes. So how is your mental health in these times right now? Um. My mental health was a hot mess. <laughs> not a hot mess. <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. Like I was I was on such a high like with my business and like just elevating and trying to grow spiritually and stuff like that and you know like police brutality and racism and stuff like that it's always been a thing and you know I've I've talked about it. I've even talked about it on um you know a YouTube um episode that I did but um I, I don't know it it just it 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 just it messed me up like I've watched every video of every single um man or woman being killed black man or woman being killed um and every time I cry my eyes out because that could easily be my father that could easily be my brother like it always hits home for me um so yeah this this last one, this last go around, yeah, it, I had to move. I had to remove myself from social media completely because I was seeing so many different opinions and it was just so much hate. And I'm the type of person where I feel everybody's energy. If somebody negative is near me, I feel all that negativity. I didn't want, I didn't want to be filled with hate. If that makes sense, like no, it makes complete sense. And I just. I, I was very overwhelmed. My anxiety and depression kicked back in and I, I just had to remove myself. And that that's that's not to say that I I didn't support the cause of Black Lives Matter, but just for me and my mental, in order for me to handle it, I just had to step away for a second. Sure. I just had to step away. Sure. So I literally just got back on social media like yesterday, day before yesterday. Okay. Hey, Miss Rose is in the thing for, she's from church. 
Hey, Miss Rose. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm going to show people out as they come in. It's, it's the advantage of doing the live show. Mm -hmm. So if people want to talk to us, they can actually. So yeah, guys, feel free to ask any questions you want of Candace or myself. It can be about the business. It can be what's on your mind. I'm probably going to start setting up to do actually audio call-ins while we're doing live. That'd lives. be cool. Um, I've got all the equipment for it. I just was lazy today and didn't set it up because <laughs> I suck. Um, but yeah, so we're going to start adding that. Um, the iTunes is now officially up. Mm -hmm. um, so if you go to iTunes and search, uh, we have to change together mm -hmm. all in one word. It doesn't matter if you use caps or not. Mm -hmm. um, it'll pop up. We got to get this number up. The num more numbers we can get up, the more we can actually start spreading this word. Right. And hopefully get some sponsors so we can build more sets and pull in more remote people. Because mm -hmm. I want to start hitting some, some celebrities. Because if, I, if we can reach other people in other circles, we can get the word spread a lot exactly. faster. Exactly. Exactly. The more we have, the better. Yeah, it, it's 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 just like everything else. You got to start with something, mm -hmm. and we're starting with this. Mm -hmm. Oh, part of my nooner crew's in. Your nooner crew. Yeah, the nooner crew. So I used to work for a three national podcasts, mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna shout out their name because I haven't got the permission to shout out their name yet. But I can't wait to shout out their name. Yeah. Um. Anyways, um. So they have the one show has 9.2 million listeners. Wow. And the other has like 1.8 million. Okay. And so when we did their lives that we did their lives at noon mm -hmm. and so we called them the nooner crew so i would be running the tech for the show <laughs> and i'd be in there talking junk to them as we were shooting <laughs> of course that's so, what you're good at so miss julie is part of the nooner crew okay yay miss she julie. said she finally caught it live <laughs> all right but anyways so yeah so you've had to deal with depression now my my question to a lot of people has been what has made this particular incident more what what finally got people moving Okay. Do you think it was a combination of we've been on hiatus with Corona and we actually have time to pay attention now? And is that kind of where, where it took it? Or was it the fact that we actually saw the whole video of the whole incident from mm -mm, there down? Because we've been seeing videos from the beginning. Like I think back to Philandro, him getting killed in front of his daughter and his um girlfriend or her wife or whatever. We, we've been seeing videos from the beginning. So I think us being in the house, some of us, we can't work. We, you know, everything is, is not what it used to be as far as, you know, waking up, going to work and doing your daily routine. So we in the house going crazy. And then on top of that, you, you really going to kill that man like that on camera with no remorse. Yeah. So hell yeah. We about, we about to raise hell. That's yeah. how I feel. Okay. So what do you mean raise hell? We about to, <laughs> <laughs> we about to show y'all what we really made of. Like if you, you, y'all, you scared of us just because of what we just because of what we look like or just because this um just because this idea that y'all or a stereotype that y'all placed upon us now who's y'all uh racist white people okay is what i would say you know uh all black people are thugs all black people um cause havoc and drama and stuff like that so oh okay we we cause havoc and drama when we just minding our business so now that we pissed off let us show you what type of havoc we could really cause okay and i mean sometimes you gotta you got to, I don't know. You, you got to show them what, what you made There's of. something my ex-wife used to say, but I can't say because I have my complexion. It was trigger the something. Uh, yeah. Okay. So like sometimes you get pushed to a point and you're like, if this is the you, you think I am, mm -hmm. let me show you. Mm -hmm. And so you never do that. And again. I could relate to that. Like, cause, cause Lisa's, um, you know how Lisa is. Yeah. I love Lisa. <laughs> um, but for me, like. I'm quiet and I'm on my business. So when people mess with me, yeah, I, I'll let you slide the first time. And I might even let you slide the second time. But that third time, I'm about to show you what I really got. I, I'm about to show you what I can really do since you want to try me. Yeah. So I feel like it, it goes the same way with um, us black people as a whole or people that are fed up with racism. Like you you pick, you pick, you pick, you pick, you um, stereotype us, you, uh, you all up in our business when we minding our business. And now we're exploding. We, we've had enough. Yeah. Sometimes that's what you got to do. Sometimes sure. you flip out on somebody and they're like, oh, okay, let me not mess with her. Yeah. Or let me not try it. So, yeah, that's, that's what it is. So they find an easier target? Is that what you're saying? I feel like some people do. They they Because it's a lot of stereotypes. Um, and if they feel like you're weak, then, yeah, they'll try yeah. you. Mm -hmm. yeah. But most people like that, they're weak themselves. Sure. You know? Hey, David Moore. Uh, hey, Nick. How are you guys doing this morning? Um, there are more people joining the room. Remember, guys, we are completely live. So if you have any questions for myself or Candice, um, definitely let us know. I'm, I'm trying to keep up with everything on the message board as this thing's going on because I'm a firm believer the only way we're going to change is that with open dialogue. Mm -hmm. uh, we can yell all we want, but unless we sit down and talk and have 
experience other points of views. What are you slipping on? My my smoothie. Oh, is the one that you made? No, it's not. I haven't ventured into smoothies, smoothies just yet. yet. Uh, I, I see it coming. <laughs> Anyways, but no, we have to we have to start to change somewhere. We have to open up the dialogues. So I'm going to do a lot of these shows. So I've talked to uh, Judge Faison. He's going to come on the show. I've got um, Cameron Hankins. He's a pastor for one of the churches I work for. He's going to come on tomorrow morning. Um, but I'm going to hit a bunch of different people up in the community, uh, black, white. I actually want to get a couple racists on the show and get their point of view. And then I want to get a couple of uh, just like people on other sides that are strong in their beliefs mm -hmm. because I want to understand every angle of this. Mm -hmm. We cannot have change unless we understand. And the only way to understand is to talk. Not you. And I remember that was even one of my questions when I did um, my video on racism. My final question that was like, you know, I've, I've dealt with racism in my life. I've seen it my whole life. I've seen it my whole entire life. It's been directed to me. It's been directed to my family, friends, whatever. So what happened to you in your life to where you you really you you're racist? Like you feel like you are superior. You feel like a black or brown people are worthless or they deserve to die on camera pretty much like okay. he I, i'm really about to fight him like it's <laughs> <laughs> what perfume are you wearing today you know what that might be what it is i always will i always will uh sweet smelling stuff so yeah. maybe that's what it is yeah. that's what it is yeah but, eat more steak you'll be fine mm -mm. and salt no, and pepper i ate steak the other day and mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. tore it from the floor up <laughs> <laughs> don't tell nobody <laughs> bathroom going down <laughs> we family here for real. We talk about everything. Uh-huh. Yeah, you've been in here tons of times. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. But hold on. Let me pull that. My computer went dead for a second. I had to fix it, y'all. So, um, but yeah. So, now, do you think racism is partly hate, partly fear? Where do you think... Well, I, I guess you can't put it just on one thing because everyone's interpretations are going to be different. But from your point of view, where do you think some racism can start from? Jealousy. Okay. Envy. Okay. That's what that is. All right. To me. Okay. Personally. Um, because I, I just, I just, the thought of somebody really hating somebody just simply because of this, the color of your skin, that's, it, 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 I mean, racism is ignorant it too, but it's, it's deeper than that. It's got to be deeper than just the color of your skin. It's, it's jealousy to me. Yeah. Envy. So your epidermis is less than one millimeter thin. Right? Your epidermis? Epidermis is your skin. Okay. Yeah, I like big words. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, if you peel back a couple of layers, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. A minus man and woman separation. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have all the same organs. We have the same muscle tissue. We have everything else is the same. Exactly. You, you could get be... past three layers of this really thin stuff we call skin. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? You could be on your deathbed and need blood. Mm -hmm. Who's to say... You, you know, you're a racist white man and the only person available to give you some bl blood is a, a black woman or a black man. What yeah. you what you going to do? You going to turn that blood down because I don't want no nigger blood in me. Yeah. No, you're going to take that damn blood if you want to live. Yeah. Like it's it's not that deep. Because there is only four types of blood type and then two variants of each one. Mm -hmm. So you have your O, your A, your AB and your uh, B. Right. And then you have your positive or negative rhizus. Right. So you've only got eight combinations to deal with. Exactly. So, exactly. yeah, we got to get past this stuff. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm, I'm finally glad to start to see a change, like even to see white people out protesting as well. Like I love it. Like even up here on Front Street, I drove past there two times and I was laying down on the horn like, yes, I'm with y'all. I'm with y'all. And it was majority white people out yeah. there protesting still. OK. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. So why do you love that? Because this is something that black people have been saying for years. Like, yeah, we, we get uh, disrespected and treated wrongly by white people. And a lot of or some white people, I, in my experience, they've been blinded to it. Okay. So to see white people, you know, shine away from that blindness and opening their eyes and waking up, it's a beautiful thing to see. So do you think it's white people in general or do you think it's this next generation? Because I, I, every time I drive past, it's a younger generation. It is a younger generation. Them, them older generations, they hard-headed. Like, they stuck in their ways. Yeah. And it is what it is with that. It is what it is. But eventually, you got to go. Yeah. Eventually, you got to go. You're going to die. <laughs> you ain't going to be here forever spreading that hate. Yeah. So, unless they pass it down to their children, in which that's how racism starts. You start them young. Sure. You know? 
um, then the racism is eventually going to die out. Well, so you got to remember, nowadays, people are not afraid to go to Google and mm-hmm. research information. Mm-hmm. Back in the old, back in the old day, right? Mm-hmm. Your mama or your grandmama was your Google. Exactly. Hey, mama, why does this happen? Mm-hmm. Mama, why does that happen? Mm-hmm. We're not in that generation anymore. Mm-hmm. We are now to the point where if we want to get some information, we're going to look at it. Right. One of the guests yesterday brought up the hip hop culture. Mm-hmm. A lot of, almost everybody likes hip hop music mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. And now we're being raised where... All this stuff is, we're, we're kind of idolizing it, mm-hmm. okay? Back in the day, when I was a kid, it wasn't so much like that. It was all country western. It was all this. It was all that. Mm-hmm. Now we're starting to make everything socially acceptable, and I th- really think that is part of the wh- why it's, this generation is starting to change mm-hmm. because now we have acceptance and we have a lot more stuff. Back in the day, Michael Jordan was our, our guy, right? Yeah. So and he, everyone liked Jordan. Mm-hmm. Even races like Jordan. Mm-hmm. My dad liked Jordan. Mm-hmm. I didn't know he was a racist until I got married, but oh well. Really? Oh yeah, it was crazy. But anyways, we're not going to talk about that yeah, one yet. Yeah. <laughs> That's for a whole other show. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in general, I think nowadays because of the access we have to information, mm-hmm. the social media and everything else, I think racism just is not going to survive. It's not. It, it ain't no way. It better not survive. Because <laughs> I'm over it. I'm telling you, I'm over it. I'm over it. So over it. So have you had a deal with any racism in your life? Uh, yeah. Okay. Do you care to give an example? Because <laughs> uh, the thing is like, let's see. I, I want people to who have never experienced racism at all mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. understand what it feels like. Because if, you, if you've never experienced it at all and you, you don't have any direct connection to it, mm-hmm. you're never going to understand it. Mm-hmm. Like I tell everybody, I have two biracial children. Right. Okay. I, as a white man, can do stuff that they can't do because... Like me driving around with bad tags, I know I'm going to get yelled at and, and get a little quick citation. Mm-hmm. My BB could have a lot more, a different scenario. Mm-hmm. So I've had to look really hard lately. My eyes have been really opening up like it is different. Mm-hmm. But for the longest time, I didn't see it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want other people that don't necessarily even have biracial children, but just want to understand, understand. So I'd love to have other people talk about their experiences. Mm-hmm. So can I get you to share one? Sure. Um, I'll actually give you two. Um, so a recap on what I've talked about before on um, on one of my episodes on my YouTube <laughs> um, was whenever I was living in Winston-Salem, I was working at IHOP and um, one of my girls that I work with, um, we were we were friends like I, um, I went to her house for holidays and stuff like that. And she got mad at me because I didn't want to take one of her tables. And she called me a bitch. I called her a crackhead. Me calling her a crackhead was factual because she was on drugs. Okay. I don't, And I don't regret calling her a crackhead because you shouldn't have called me no bitch. But anyway, so <laughs> she decides to call me a nigger in front of every, Like, she screamed it to the top of her lungs in the restaurant. And, like, you could hear a pin drop in the restaurant. You had some white people in the restaurant yeah, that's that... A, that's our pucker word. Yeah. You had some people, white people in the restaurant that continued eating and didn't feel no way about it. Even her friend, um, she she took her side. She was just like, well, if she hadn't called her a crackhead, then maybe she wouldn't have called her a nigger. And then you had other people in uproar. Like, I even... After the whole situation, I, I was upset and I was trying to hold back my tears. And it wasn't like sad tears. It was one of those, I can't whoop her ass tears. Like, I, I don't know if you've ever had that situation, but if you can't get a hold of somebody, you'd be so pissed off that tears start coming out your eyes. But I walked up to my table and it was four white women at my table. So I just stood there at the table. They were just looking at me like all sad because, you know, they didn't know what to say. And I'm trying to hold back tears. And then one of the ladies, she said, um, I'm so sorry that you had to hear that. And I just bust out crying. I was just like, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I got to go to the back and get myself together. So when I came back out, they had left me like $50. They didn't even eat their food. And they wrote on a note. They was like, we're really sorry. And that 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 whole situation was crazy. But I have another situation too. Okay. So, because I have, I have millions of racist uh, situations. I know. That's why you're on the show. <laughs> so um, when I used to live in Bladen County, um, Me and my family, we were the only black family on that dirt road that we lived on. So when we first moved there, somebody um, broke into our house. 
And it, it was crazy because nobody on the dirt road seemed to see nothing. Nobody seen a car pull up in our yard or nothing like that. Now, we never got no evidence to prove who did it or whatever, but me personally, even as a young child, I, I think I may have, may have been in like third grade. I feel like somebody on that dirt road mm -hmm. broke into our house to intimidate us to leave. Yeah. And even the neighbors that we had, we ended up um, getting into it with them about something. And we would come outside sometimes and they would scream, fuck you niggers, fuck you, fuck you niggers, you black dusty niggers, like just going in on us. So, and I mean, that was right next door yeah. and right across the street and right around the corner on the dirt road. Yeah. So, yeah, I've, I've experienced it yeah. plenty of times, but I, I had to learn to take my power back. Okay. And how did you do that? Because number one, that's just a word. I'm not a nigger. Nigger means ignorant. I'm not ignorant at all. I'm very smart. So... Most of the time when somebody call you something like that, they trying to antagonize you. They trying to piss you off because they want to get you out of character. They want you to do something that's going to cause you to wind up in jail. You're not going to get me out of character. You're not, I'm not going to jail for you. I'm not, I'm not doing none of that. So you going to call me one of those words and I'm going to smile in your face and I'm not going to let you see me down. I'm not going to let you see that that word may hurt me. Yeah. You never let them see you sweat. Never. Even if you are sweating deep down inside, you don't let them see you sweat. Be like a duck on water. Yeah. Yeah, I got yeah. you. <laughs> Little feet are moving a million miles it, Yeah, minute. yeah. I got you. Yes. Take your power back. That word don't mean nothing. All right. So I'm going through the things and um, let's see. Nick uh, said something about um, why are how white racist and he's going all through all this other stuff. I didn't you know, just a chance to read all of it. Um, let me ask you this, though. Do you think do you think only white people can be racist? Because I hear a lot of, I've heard a couple of people say that, not a lot, but a couple. And I always tell them there's racist in every, yeah, it's, it's a pretty, it's a novel. And I want to read what Nick, whatever the fuck, I'm sorry, whatever no, 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 your no, no, name no. is. <laughs> um, I want to read what he got to say. No, I was fl flipping through it and it wasn't bad I, from what I saw. Oh, okay. All right. Yes. Yeah, so, right. huh? You almost got the cuss out. Uh, yeah. And I've had the cuss out from down. Candace before. Let me calm down. I was scared once. Let me calm down. I straight down. puckered up. I dodged and everything. <laughs> Ninja rolled. It's a good thing I'm like Kung Fu Panda. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyways, so um, have have you ever seen, or how do you address other racisms? So like, do you, A, do you think only white people are racist? Yes. Okay. Why do you think that? Because, because I just do. I don't even need no explanation. I've never dealt with racism from any other race. Okay. So that's just my point on it. Okay. So I've lived in other places. I've lived in other cities. I've lived in other countries. Mm -hmm. um, racism, from what I've seen, is not only that. So anytime that you have a superior mentality or you, you think you're in that position... That can be that. So back in Germany, we had with Adolf Hitler. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was that was racism. Mm -hmm. Okay, you you've got you had the serfs and 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 all that stuff in in England. Mm -hmm. Again, that was a, a racism thing. Mm -hmm. um, the Japanese, but around World War II, they had that mentality of, and not, again, not everybody, but some. Mm -hmm. um, so from my experiences throughout the world, I've seen racism come from other things, but I think. And some of it is not even racism. Some of it's not understanding mm -hmm. because they've never been put in environments to work with other different people mm -hmm. to really see that we're all the same. Mm -hmm. So that's why I want to have these conversations. I want people who are not like I grew up in North Dakota, 99.99% mm -hmm. .99 white, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You know my story. Yeah. Yeah. When I got, I, I really didn't start meeting people of color until I got in the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. And in the Marine Corps, everybody's green. Mm -hmm. It's just how we're trained. Mm -hmm. Not all of us take to that training, but some of us do. Mm -hmm. But so, so from my point of view, I don't think it's just white people are racist. Like I've seen racism and other stuff, but I want to get the people to start seeing that. So I guess it's really not even a question; it's more of a statement. Mm -hmm. All right, I gotta, I gotta hold my love crystal because I'm, I'm starting to get upset. Wait, what's Crystal saying? No, my love crystal. I have a rose quartz. Oh, and I brought it with me just so I could feel the love because okay. I, I kind of felt like I was gonna see some ignorant stuff. Oh, have you seen ignorant stuff yet? 
No, just people. You you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Like I'm not perfect. I'm I'm still growing. I, who, I they're entitled oh, to with, their with opinion. Richard? Yeah. Oh, okay. So Richard's part of the Nooner crew. All right. So, uh, so the thing is, how do I explain this? Um, you think only white people are racist as a racist view. I'm not racist. So what you're not going to do is you're not going to call me racist because I treat everybody the same way. If I don't like you, it's because you've done something personal to me. But I am not racist. Okay. So you can kiss my ass, Richard Denoff. <laughs> All right, so let's let's have a conversation about this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, from, fr- so I I I'm kind of the same way. Okay, and you've known me for years, mm-hmm. so you know my personality. I'm a firm believer if you if if you generalize, mm-hmm. generalization is the basis of most of the stuff. Mm-hmm. When you take the time to meet more people mm-hmm. and understand them, that's when you start to really know the person. General blanket statements will always get you in trouble. Mm-hmm. I have never seen one blanket statement. Other than, well, no, that, that'll even piss some people off. That that it's not going to offend somebody. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So it's just a point of view. Um, boy, you all made me sweat for a second there. You see this? <laughs> like I put on good deodorant oh today. <laughs> Can, Candace had me worried for a second because I've seen that side. Because because don't call me don't 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 even put me and racist in the same sentence. Yeah. I'm not racist. Yeah. I stand for my people. Sure. I see what they go through every day. I live it. I breathe it. I've seen it. Yeah. Don't ever put my name and races in the same sentence. Don't. Okay. <laughs> don't. <laughs> I D-O-N-T. It, I don't. don't. I get it. Don't play with me. So are you going to go out to some of the protests? And your anger shows bad intentions immediately. How does my anger show bad intentions? Please explain yourself, sir. And what do you do for a living? What's your education since you know everything and since you're so smart? <laughs> what, do, what do you do? My anger shows bad intentions. No, my anger shows that I'm pissed off for my people. It shows. That's what it shows. It, sho- it shows that I'm passionate. That's what it shows. It don't show. It don't show bad intentions. No, it shows. It shows frustration. Exactly. It shows you've had to deal with a lot in your life. Mm-hmm. And it shows that you're finally getting sick of it and you mm-hmm. want things to change mm-hmm. and it, right now you feel stuck mm-hmm. we're all feel stuck mm-hmm. and until we're not stuck anymore mm-hmm. we're going to be stuck right and the only way for us to get unstuck is to deal with it right find a way for us to pull ourselves out of this mm-hmm. um and, and that's all i can say on that mm-hmm. it, it, it's it's we're all dealing with this and we're all going to feel frustrated we're all going to feel upset we're going to feel like we have no power. Um, but yeah. Hey, Lily. <laughs> He's funny. I'm going la- to laugh at you. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to laugh to keep from getting angry. Since you don't like my anger, you know, usually a, a lot of white men, you, you get intimidated by a black woman's anger because you know how strong we are. So I'm, I'm not, I'm going to laugh at you. Yeah. I'm going to laugh at you. Peace and blessings to you, please. Yeah. So. I actually know Richard. Uh-huh. He's actually a pretty cool dude. I, I don't. I, I, I don't. I think. I think what he's saying is coming out wrong. I don't want to meet Richard. I, I don't want to see Richard. Oh, Joy's on. Hi, Hi Joy. Joy. <laughs> <laughs> we need some joy right now. We need some joy. We need some. Joy should come to the studio. She really should. I love her vibe. I love her energy. Yeah, Joy's good people. Mm-hmm. But you know what? The, I love about this though is we're getting the the more passionate somebody gets the more we're actually starting to crack the code. We, we, you can't make an omelet without cracking some eggs, right? I, I feel your blood pressure going up through the roof. I, right? I'm so glad I turned the air conditioner back on. <laughs> and, and there he go with that. I dated white, uh, dated black women. That's, you know, I, I know racist people with uh, black kids. That don't mean shit. That don't mean nothing. Y'all fetish us. You dated black women because it was probably a fetish. Not because you really cared and not because you were really concerned about what we go through. I could bet you that. <laughs> Do you need more of that uh the rose quartz? It's, it's not working right now. He <laughs> I don't I don't know. I need Jesus right now. Do you, need a, do you need a couple minutes yourself? Oh no, no, Are I'm good? good. I love right, this. Cool. I love this. All right. I'm just making sure I love it. I All love right. it. I, I've known you for years. I, I I'm starting to see when you start shaking, I always know, okay, one thing one or two things about to happen. You're either going to break down. We're going to have the best show in the world. <laughs> you love to see my breakdowns. I swear. It's not that I love to see your breakdowns. I love to see your growth. Yeah. 
And yeah. every time you you have a breakdown right before you go to your next level, mm -hmm. it's never failed with you. As long as I've known you, mm -hmm. you get stressed, you get uh, you get like hypersensitive. Mm -hmm. But after that, you blossom yeah. like a freaking flower, I do. dude. I do. Every damn time. I do. Yeah. I do. It's like it, when I break down, I get I go into a hole and I can't get out of that hole. Uh. Can we do? Can we delete Richard? Richard, you do. You do need Jesus because you have hate in your heart. I'm, I have hate in my heart, y'all. I got hate in my heart. Richard, this entitled ass white man said I have hate in my heart. Oh, y'all always think your opinions are so right and you're perfect. And, and do you have hate in your heart? You don't have no hate in your heart, do you? Huh? <laughs> huh? We're on a forty second delay, sweetie. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you know that laugh of mine, too. That's when I get nervous laugh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm on my second cup of coffee. So these conversations are going to hurt sometimes. They are. They and are. But like I said, I love they, it. They, I love it. They need to happen. I love it. I, you know, honestly, as much as it's making me uncomfortable. So my first instinct, right, when I saw this starting to happen, mm -hmm. I was like, uh-oh, maybe I should shut everything down. <laughs> no, no. But Don't I, shut it down. But no, I can't. Mm -hmm. Because if I shut it down and I stop this, we can't grow. Exactly. I can't learn. Exactly. These because conversations have to be had. The more, the more upset somebody gets, that means I can start to understand because now I'm feeling uncomfortable. You're okay? uncomfortable? A little bit, but that's okay. I need that. Okay. Because you deal with uncomfortable a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is a little piece of me feeling that. Not to the same extent, but it's, it's, it's I'm starting to understand. Oh, Steve's in the room. Steve, what are you doing? I, you went to war. I have the hate in my heart. People who killed my brothers. Oh. So if you have hate in your heart, oh, no, just shut up and stop judging me because you are just like me then. If that's the case, if I have hate in my heart and you have hate in yours, how are you any better than me, Richard? Huh? Huh? <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to put a, a, a <laughs> phone call with you and Richard together I hope you still, later. I hope you, no, 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 no. I hope you still have love for me, though. I don't I, I don't want you to feel bad oh, for, me, um, for me cussing... Uh, him out and telling him to kiss my black ass. Listen, I love everybody. Okay, mm -hmm. well, there's some certain people I don't love, and you know who yeah. those are people. Yeah. Are. But the thing is, you guys, everybody's entitled to their opinion. Mm -hmm. Everybody's entitled to their point of view. Mm -hmm. Everybody's lived their own life. Mm -hmm. How can I ever be upset about that? You are telling, you are defending yourself. You are telling your story. You have your right to your own feelings, right? Right. Have your feelings. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just got to work on being <laughs> hypersensitive because I'm a little hypersensitive right now. But that's great because that means it, it, it means we're starting to get to the heart of something. Right. As much as uncomfortable as I am, as much as I want to go to that bathroom right now and drop a deuce because like my stomach and my balls are like blah, 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 blah. It's like doing a, like a Super Bowl right there. Like if, if I might have to install a toilet on these no. for these conversations. It's about to get interesting. That's what this is about to be. But yeah. um. So yeah, let's talk more about your company. Let's talk. Yes, let's go to some happy place that. for a minute. Then we'll come back to some not some happy places. Because <laughs> I, I need to let my stomach settle a little bit. <laughs> okay, so. Y'all gave me an ulcer. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I got into my business venture um, just from trying to get into a healthier lifestyle. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to eventually um, go vegetarian, um, maybe pescatarian. Um, but, um, juicing is a good way to get, a, a adequate amount of fruits and veggies in your system. Mm -hmm. Um, and I found a way to make them taste really good mm -hmm. and I haven't had any bad reviews yet. So cool. I love it. Cool. Um, also with my teas, um, I'm a tea drinker. Okay. I, I like to sit and read and drink my tea. Um, start my morning out with some tea. Um, so really I just took things that I love. And that I do on a daily basis and um, turn it into a business and decided to share the wealth um, and give people more knowledge just on fruits and veggies. A lot of people, you tell them something about a vegetable and it's like, ah, I don't want that. I want some meat. I want some steak. I want pork. I want all this other stuff. But in the end, it's, it's not the best for us or really it's all about doing things in moderation. Okay. Um, so... So yeah, that's how I got my business started. And then Bliss, 
bliss when you're in a blissful state that's a, a happy state that's a positive state um so that's kind of how i came up with the name yeah. and everything too okay mm -hmm. so how long have you been doing the business mm, actively doing the business let's see uh i would say maybe like february or march yeah the beginning of the year because i've been trying i was trying to like perfect it before i really uh went full force with it yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was one of the guinea pigs. You were. Yeah, you were. <laughs> I, the only one I couldn't get down on was a spinach one. But you know my feelings about oh green stuff. Oh my goodness, stuff. you and a lot of other people. I say something about spinach juice and it's ill. I don't. I don't want no spinach, but it's good. That spinach and the pineapple. The pineapple makes it sweet. The ginger gives it a little kick. Mm -hmm. I love ginger. Yeah. Um. So it's good. Yeah. Don't knock it till you try it. I I tried it. And it, it was it was the it was the consistency more than anything. The consistency. So like the the mango one, mm -hmm. I'm in love with. Mm -hmm. Freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. You did one with watermelon. Mm -hmm. I was like, if that had just a sprit a little a lemon, mm -hmm. loved it. Mm -hmm. Um, what was the other one that I really dug? Um, uh, it was the orange and what was else? It was pineapple, it? apple, orange. Oh, delicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love those ones. I yeah. just can't. I can't get. To, like I see a green juice and I just can't bring myself to drink it. Oh my gosh. Eat your fruits and veggies. You got to. No, the the cow eats the grass. I eat the cow, and then happy, happy. Do you want me to put your phone away? Mm mm. Okay. Because I want to. This, keep on this is reading? how we. This is how we change together. That's true. Okay. So Let's yeah. Let's see. It's just a conversation. I don't know, understand why you're getting me. So I understand aggressive. So Richard, you. So here's what you don't understand. It's not so much what you're saying. What you said today. What was a, a, it was more of a trigger point. Okay. So I, I, I've known Candace for, like I said, about close to six years. Mm -hmm. I know what my son goes through now, but I didn't before. Mm -hmm. it, it's not like this, this is the first time these conversations are happening. Mm -hmm. it, it, you, you get to a point, it, it's like a firefight, right? You've been, you've been in this, you've been in this war scenario for so long and you've been tapped down. You've been in a land, uh, land, uh, a minefield and Every day you're in that minefield, and sooner or later you're gonna step on a mine, and it's a it's a it's a cumulate or as a uh, it's a buildup of all this stuff, and sometimes you just have to let it loose, and like it it, it you just can't help it. it it's it could be any little thing is gonna set it off because you've been re repressing it for so long. I've been repressing it since birth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so you, if you don't like my anger and aggression, please stop talking to me. Yeah. Please, sir. So that that's what you've got to understand. It, it's so BB 16 years old. Okay. He's biracial. Um, I have to constantly worry about him now getting pulled over by the police department mm -hmm. because of everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. it, it, and it, it's, it's sad that I have to be like that, mm -hmm. but unfortunately in our area, there's not some of the best police officers in the world. Mm -hmm. there, I know there's good cops and there's bad cops. Mm -hmm. Your dad's a cop. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people don't know about me. Like, I, I, I have, I, I see it from both ends of it. Yeah. Um, my dad is a state trooper. He's not a cop, but law, man of the law. Same yeah. thing. Um, and I, I've, I've even seen comments from, you know, people of color, you know, saying, you know, Fuck all the cops and fuck all law enforcement. But I'm just like, once he take that uniform off, he's still a black man. Yeah. And without that uniform, he can go out into the world and get mistreated by people as well if they don't know that he's a man of law or even if they do know that he's a man of law. Did you see the senator who got maced? No. Oh, yeah. It was in, I think it was Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, it happened like two weeks ago. There was a protest and the mayor or the, no, the senator of their state got maced. Mm hmm. That's yeah. crazy. So it's 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 you take people out of their uniform, and people get treated not the same. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's 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 not right, and we, but we we've got to get past that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how. Mm -hmm. I really don't. Mm -hmm. And so my only solution, like I I keep on saying, is talking. Be, but like, how do we get past to the next step? What is the next step? Right. How like we have to understand. But how? Like, I, I'm open to ideas. Mm -hmm. I've got some ideas as far as how to how to help with the the police department and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I, I went on a whole tension on that on the last show, mm -hmm. so you mm -hmm. guys don't need to hear it again. Yeah. But like, I want a better world for my son. Mm -hmm. Plain and simple. Mm -hmm. 
I can't fix the past. The past is the past. I can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. I wish I could, but I can't. Mm -hmm. How do I make the future better for my kid and for my grandkids. Right. Because this is something they're going to have to deal with for their whole life. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is something we're going to have to deal with our whole life. Mm -hmm. How do I become a better person to instill change so they don't have to go through the same things that his mom went through. Right. His grandma went through. Right. His grandpa went through. Right. How do I change people like my dad? Mm hmm. You know? Closed minded people. Yeah. And see, those are the type of people I can't have a conversation with. If you open minded, okay. But you close minded, nah, it's not gonna work. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm all for agree to disagree. We could do that too. But I don't know. It's just something when we talking about race and it's somebody of a different race, um, mainly white people, because that's because that's from, what you see. Yeah, that's what I see. And that's what you experience. You can't you can't you can't try to downplay my emotions or tell me I'm being too angry or I'm being too aggressive. You've never dealt with what I've dealt with. So how can you tell me how to handle it or how to, how to express it? We can't. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So don't be close minded with my anger and my aggression. Try to understand it. Sure. Try to dig deep and figure out where it even comes from. And that's why when I did my YouTube and I asked that question, I legit, I legitimately wanted to know, what have you gone through that makes that made you feel like you are superior? That makes you feel like black people and brown people are beneath you, that we're worthless. Okay. So my question to you would be is if you give somebody that position, right? Mm -hmm. What makes you think you're superior? Okay. And it, the, what I hear in my head is what makes you think you're inferior that you think that they think they're superior. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I always like to look at every side of the coin mm -hmm. because if, if we're, if we think somebody thinks that they're superior, right? Mm -hmm. That has to come to a place where, why do you think that, I know that darn that, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what caused that mindset? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it, it's, it's, you got to be really careful about the power you give people. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, the only power somebody has over you is the power you let them have. Mm -hmm. And and, and you've got to be really careful about that because that can ruin your emotion. It can ruin your everything. It, it, you and got a point because I'm I'm even I'm sitting here thinking about it and I'm even I'm even mad that he that he he got that anger out of me just now. Yeah, but why did it happen? Because I'm frustrated. I'm I'm upset. Like I'm. And that's good. So w let's get to the root of why you're frustrated and why you're mad. Why is that? That, I told you we were going to go hard yeah, today. I, I just feel like when you see... I almost spilled my coffee. Oh, please don't. Because <laughs> you need that. I do. But when you see people that look like you, people that could have been your father, your brother, your cousin, um, being uh, killed because of the color of their skin or killed because they were stereotyped or whatever, like that's that's a trigger. I feel like... Social media plays a a big part. Like, it, it's almost like we dealing with like PTSD from from seeing it. Like, it, it it's a trigger. Mm -hmm. It's a trigger. Yeah, it triggers you. That's why I use the word. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It. Uh, it's no, no, no. You're <laughs> so close to the breakthrough. I can feel it, dude. <laughs> I, I I like I I know it. It's, it's you're so close, mm -hmm. and and you're starting to calm down again. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this is great. Like I told you, remember remember the breakdown show we had of you? Yeah. It was phenomenal. Yeah. And you didn't want to yeah. air it, but everybody yeah. loved it. <laughs> yeah. So we we get the, the PTSD thing. We we get that this could be your your brother, your your sister, your mother. It could be anybody. Mm -hmm. These this is the the cold, hard truth of what you're in mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And it it's not fair at all. Mm -hmm. But now people can start to understand. This is where that frustration is coming from. This is where when people come at a certain way, you're automatically going to be on defense mm -hmm. because of everything that's happening day in and day out. Yeah. And you're always worried about it could be somebody that you know and love. Mm -hmm. exactly. Am I right or wrong? You're right. Every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> Every so often. But so that's great. So now we have to get how do we move to the next level? If we can address that this is part of the problem, not the only part of the problem. Well, let's, let's, let's go back to the beginning board. So what other problems do you see with that could be causing this racism? 
Um, um, lack of knowledge. Okay. Ignorance. Okay. They want to swear up and down that we ignorant, but you not liking somebody because you, you have a, a stereotype, you have this idea in your head of what they're capable of, um, of what they could possibly do to you, um, that, you know, that they're worthless, that they're using all of government's assistance and you, you can't get your checks and all that other stuff. Like, you know, I grew up on assistance, right? Yeah. So I, I, I grew up really, really poor in North Dakota. Mm -hmm. My mom put herself through uh, college. Mm -hmm. So we grew up on food stamps, the mm -hmm. welfare, the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's, it's not just one demographic that has to, uh, who needs that. We have to, we have to dismantle that box. That they're trying to put us all in. Yeah. Or or see past that box and sidestep it. Exactly. Yeah. Or jump in the box with us and actually get to know us. Don't judge somebody just off the base of race. Get to know them. Or let me go to Food Line and make some, some ingredients like I'm going to make a cake and blow up the box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Like it, you, you can't. You have to get to know a person's soul and their intentions and just their mind. Pick their brain a little bit. And then if you want to say they're worthless and they shouldn't be here on earth, then okay, that's your opinion. But to just look at a group of people, to to feel like everybody that's in the hood or whatever, they're worthless and they, they don't matter and all of that, like, no, that's, that's ignorance. That's ignorance. All right. So Joy uh, chimed in. She said, what piece of advice can you give to someone who doesn't know what to do with their deep-seated frustration regarding our current situation? Do you want to feel that or should I? Or should I, we both? I think you should feel that because, I mean, I have I have some frustration, clearly. Sure. Deep-seated. But we all have frustration. Mm -hmm. So the only advice I can give to you is you have to get that frustration out. You have to talk, but you cannot talk with just your same circle that you've always talked with. Mm -hmm. You have to venture out and talk to other people. Where is this frustration coming from? Mm -hmm. So if we know we're being frustrated because of race, mm -hmm. talk to other races. Get other points of view, mm -hmm. because if you just stay in the one environment you've always been in, mm -hmm. how can you ever see a different scenario? Mm -hmm. So if, if, if I only stayed in North Dakota, mm -hmm. I would have North Dakota views, mm -hmm. but I've lived in North Dakota. I've lived in North Carolina. I've lived in California. I've lived in Japan. I haven't been a lot of places yet. Unlike, unlike my son, my son's a world traveler, but I, I'm, I've never just been stuck on a North Dakota mindset. Mm -hmm. So if I talk to somebody from back home, right, they have a different mindset than me because they've never seen a lot of other stuff. So I right. get weird questions. Right. Um, but don't be afraid to talk to people. Don't be afraid to get into a difference of opinion with people. Mm -hmm. As long as everybody stays civilized and can have an open line of communication, this is great. Mm -hmm. if, if someone gets passionate about something, great. That means you're starting to work on something. You cannot forge a, a blade unless you temper it in heat. Right. It, it That's the only way to make steel strong. Mm -hmm. You have to quench it. and It, it, it just needs to get warm. Mm -hmm. Let it get warm, but be sensible and be smart about it. Do, don't let it overwhelm you. Use the passion to your advantage. Mm -hmm. Really get to the heart of something because if, if someone's getting upset and someone's getting frustrated or someone's getting uncomfortable, it means you're getting close to understanding something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, like, if, did you ever see Indiana Jones movies? No. You've never seen Indiana Jones movies? No. <laughs> okay. Well, so the, the, the worst traps were the stuff that was always closest to the treasure. Mm -hmm. You just have to be ready for the traps. Yeah. Don't, don't let the traps take you out. And I'm, I'm, I think I just learned that I can't be the person to educate somebody that's uh, closed minded and small minded when it comes to this race stuff. Like I, I'm the person that that talk to that'll talk to the white people that that they know that they've been around black people and, and they know y'all not mm -hmm. all the same. And, you know, that we not all the same. And I just I, I love people for people. Sure. I, I can't I can't. Wait, I can't. So, I can't. so what happened was, it was two storm fronts coming together. Mm -hmm. You had one air mass coming from the east, mm -hmm. one air mass coming from the west, mm -hmm. and you, we had a tornado. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I I have a ten, I'm more of like water. Yeah. So if someone comes towards me, I can move and ride with See, the I, water. I'm a fire sign, so I'm so, ready. So am I. I'm ready. I'm a Leo too. Oh, true. <laughs> yeah. But I'm but I'm old and yeah. I'm fluffy. Yeah. And I can't fight like I used to. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm a little slower, so yeah. I'm just like okay, like. 
I really want to be like a Mr. Miyagi when I get old. Mm, okay. I can definitely see it like a little old man it. living in the woods in my karate pants all I day. I can definitely it see it. It would work for me. Mm-hmm. But um, so I tell you what, guys, I think, are there any more questions for us? Because I think we had a pretty great show. And other than that, is there anything else you'd like to say, Candice? Um, you to shout out your business or anything again? Yeah. my Shout out to my business. This is Bliss. Um, you can go look at my page and follow my page on Facebook. It's just This Is Bliss. I have an Instagram page as well, underscore This Is Bliss. Um, and I just want to say to my people, keep fighting. Like, Black Lives Matter. <laughs> Black Lives Matter. All Lives Matter, yeah. Here you go. No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, listen, if you are here on this earth, you have a purpose. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. God does not put nobody here for for no reason. Sure. So yes, all all of them matter, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, I'm standing with Black Lives Matter because it's apparent that a lot of people in this world do not feel that Black Lives Matter. No, no, no. I get your point of view. Yeah. Okay. And I under I understand that a hundred percent. And I'm so what I'm saying is there you have to. I mean, I could go into this a whole, another 10 minutes if yeah, you really want yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Are we going to go down this rabbit hole? Let's do Let's it. Do Let's it. do okay, it. Okay, cool. I love rabbit holes. All right. So Black Lives Matter, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you see the White Lives Matter, Asian Lives Matter, and the We, the, we All Matter. Mm -hmm. Again, this I think this deals a lot with frustration. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it, it's like... Um, I'm trying to think of a really smart analogy, but I can't figure out one. And this is normally my knack. Right. I'm good at this stuff. So... But from your point of view, this needs to be said, right? Mm -hmm. And you're so frustrated because of everything that's happened to you in the past that you really want to bring home that Black Lives Matter and you're tired of this crap, mm -hmm. okay? And then you've got people like me who try to empathize and try to see the other stuff. Mm -hmm. But we even get frustrated sometimes when we see it's just, it's like, well, yes, Black Lives Matter, but what about all the other lives? But we have to take it a step further on, from my point of view is... I get why you're saying that because you are so frustrated. You are so this and like you feel like you, your voice hasn't been heard mm -hmm. and you need your voice to be heard. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong? Yeah, you're right. Okay. Or, well, yeah. So far. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I'm going to go sideways really quick on this one. <laughs> so anyways, but so you want your voice to be heard. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have to put that out front. Mm -hmm. It's like um, it's like stuff in the store. Mm -hmm. if, if I put this at eye level, I'm more likely to see it than if I put them on the bottom of the shelf. Right. Right. And you, from my point of view, it seems like you feel like you've been at the bottom of the shelf. Yeah. And you want your time on the top shelf. Mm -hmm. So you have to put this up there. It's like rebranding. Mm -hmm. So you have to put this up there. And yes, we're not saying that none of the other stuff matters, but it's time for your shine. Right. Is that, is that yeah. kind, kind yeah. of right? Yeah. Look at me. I didn't yeah. even piss out anybody you, off. You didn't. That was, that almost made sense. That was a good explanation. Yeah. Holy crap. I love it. Yeah. Let's see. Um, do, 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 equate passion with anger. Black woman, be sensible. Oh, yeah. So, all right. Uh, let's see. Um, how can I explain this? Um, so, thank you. Unfortunately, so many are quick to uh, e uh, equate passion with angry black woman, be sensible. Okay. You're right. Um, I don't think angry black woman is an actual angry black woman. I think angry black woman could be a frustrated black woman. And people misconstrue frustration for anger because someone takes a, a louder tone. They posture themselves different. It's it's You can go to an aggressive stance, mm -hmm. but it's not so much what happened then and there. It's a cumulation. It's a buildup of everything that got you to that point. Exactly. Um, so, it, yes, you may have stepped on that landmine, but dang it, you walked through the minefield. Mm -hmm. You you went there with somebody mm -hmm. that you didn't need to go there with. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you needed to, so you experienced that point of view. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's time for your personal growth. Maybe you need that landmine. Um, but, yeah, so I don't... I've, I've been on the receiving end of an angry black woman because of something I did. <laughs> But it wasn't race related. It was because Jamie Hansen did not want to mow the yard. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> I got fussed out major times for that stuff. Because mm -hmm. was, I was lazy back in the day. Mm -hmm. I'm still lazy now. <laughs> but so, yeah, there, there is a complete difference. And you have to realize that. You have to see that. You have to understand that. People are going to get frustrated. But if they're showing you their frustration, it means they're ready for a change. Right. They're ready for something to be different. Right. So listen to them. Don't 
posture up against them right away. Take the time to listen. listen. Take the time to open your ears. Yes. yes. Because people will tell you everything you need to know if you take the time to listen. Mm -hmm. But if you try to meet an unstoppable force with another unstoppable force, they're going to collide and the stronger unstoppable force is going to win. Mm -hmm. And that's going to bring hate. Mm -hmm. That's going to bring misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. You can never, you can never thrive in that kind of environment. Right. You have to use sense. You have to use my, what I call my old man wisdom with my old man eyes. Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid to give people the power that they need. But listen, mm -hmm. sometimes you, the best thing you can do for somebody is just shut up and listen. Right. And that's a hard lesson for me because I like to talk. Yeah. But sometimes that's what's needed. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Look at me sounding almost smart. You, yeah, <laughs> with your glasses on, looking like a professor. What? Okay. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> All right, guys. But I think that's going to be a show. I got to start setting up the studio for another photo shoot. So um, I love you guys. I'm Jamie. This is Candace. It got real. I downer <laughs> had an ulcer on the TV. I'm and so sorry. I'm don't be so sorry. sorry. I'm a work in progress. I'm still growing. I'm not perfect. And it is what it is. No, but we're all growing. Yeah. And it's not going to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. If if we were comfortable, mm -hmm. this would ne we'd never be to this point. Right. We have to have these uncomfortable conversations. Mm -hmm. Jamie's going to have to have a couple ulcers. <laughs> I might even have a heart attack on TV. <laughs> it is okay. But damn it, we're going to change. Yes. Yes. All right. We are together. I love you guys. Bye, y'all.